The Norfolk City Council is now in session. The opening of the prayer will be given by Chaplain Terry Haddock of the Norfolk Police Department. And please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, if you could join me in prayer, please. Almighty God, I come before you and ask that you keep our great city in your loving hands. It is a city that's full of kindness and it's welcomed arms stretched out to others. I pray for our mayor and our city council. I thank you for each of them and their willingness to serve our great city. Bless each one of them for their talent, their wisdom that they bring and that they make the decisions that guide our city forward. I pray for our first responders. Please keep them safe as they serve and protect. Let your love and blessing be upon us in this wonderful city that we call home. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You still look down. <laughs> That's right. All right, I'll show you guys. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look how tall I am. <laughs> the clerk, please call the roll. This is a whole new world up here. <laughs> this is part of this. Ms. Graves? Here. <laughs> Ms. Johnson? Here. Ms. McClellan? Here. Mr. Riddick? Here. Mr. Smeagle? Here. Mr. Thomas? Here. Dr. Wibley? Here. Mr. Alexander? Here. The motion is dispensed with the reading of the minutes of our previous meeting. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Ms. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Alexander? Aye. Mr. Clerk, please read the resolution certifying the closed meeting. The resolution certifying a closed meeting to the Council of the City of Norfolk held in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act. Adopt the resolution. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Ms. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Alexander? Aye. Uh, good evening and again welcome to the Norfolk City Council Chamber. For the benefit of those who do not regularly attend the Council meetings, our procedure tonight is to take up ceremonial items first. Next, we'll take up public hearings and then the consent agenda, which will be voted on in the block. If a member of the Council or the public wishes to discuss an item, that item will be moved, removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. Following the consent agenda, we'll take up our regular agenda items in order as they appear on the docket. Upon the completion of the agenda, We'll take up any new business to come before the council. To address the council, you should have registered to speak outside in the lobby prior to 7 p.m. When your name is called, please come to the podium, state your name and address, and please limit your comments, remarks to three minutes. That's, that's it before there. Mr. Mr. Clerk, we have no uh, ceremonial items, so we'll take up uh, IB1. <clears throat> Yes, sir. The, this item is um, receipt of bids pursuant to invitation for bids and notice of public hearing. Uh, the notice was uh, in the local press to accept bids for a long-term wireless facilities franchise agreement with a 10-year term with up to three renewal terms of five years each in the city's right-of-way subject to certain terms and conditions. How many bids have been received? One bid. Please read the bid and mark it for identification. Uh, the bid is from AT&T, and uh, it is a formal response to the city's request for bids for franchise for use of the city's right-of-way uh, for a non-exclusive wireless facilities franchise agreement as finalized pursuant to discussion with city staff and city attorney's office. New singular wireless PCS seeks access to rights-of-way for the provision of communication services, and it is marked uh, AT&T bid. Mr. Mayor. Right. Thank you. Are there any additional bids offered? If no additional bids uh, are offered, I declare the bidding closed. Is there any member of the public who wishes to be heard on this matter? If there's no member of the public who wishes to be heard on this matter, I declare the public hearing closed. Is there a recommendation from uh, the city staff regarding the bid received from new uh, sing singular wireless PCS LLC? Uh, yes, sir. City staff recommends that the bid by new singular wireless PCS LLC be reviewed by city staff and a recommendation be made to city council at the October 10, 2017 meeting. Thank you. Is there a motion to continue this matter until the next meeting of the city council on October the 10th, 2017 to receive the recommendation of staff, city staff, and to consider the bid 
from New Signaler Wireless PCS LLC. Mr. Thomas? I so move. Second the motion. It's been moved by Mr. Thomas and second by uh, uh, Mrs. McClellan. Uh, is there any further discussion from the council? If not, Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Ms. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Alexander? Aye. PH1? Public hearing one is scheduled for this day on the application of the Monument Development 2 LLC to amend the future land use designation in the general plan from institutional to multifamily corridor and designate the existing structure as an Offic historic landmark for special exception for multifamily development with more than six dwelling units on property located at 2607 Colonial Avenue and by 5-0 vote planning commission recommends approval. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. There's no opposition, but Chris Johnson is here to answer any questions, as well as Alan Sullivan wants to register his uh, support. Mr. Clerk, call the roll. I have three ordinances for this, Mr. Mayor. The first is an ordinance to amend the city's general plan so as to change the land use designation for property located at 2607 Colonial Avenue from institutional to multifamily quarter. Dispense with the charter requirement for the new ordinance and adopt Ms. Graves. Aye. Ms. Johnson. Aye. Ms. McClellan. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smigel. Aye. Mr. Thomas. Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Alexander? Aye. The second is an ordinance to designate the property located at 2607 Colonial Avenue as a Norfolk Historic Landmark and to amend the zoning map to show the designation. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Ms. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Alexander? Aye. And the final is an ordinance granting a special exception to Monument Development 2 LLC to permit six or more dwelling units on property located at 2607 Colonial Avenue. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Ms. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Alexander? Aye. PH2? Public hearing two scheduled for this day to hear comments on the conveyance to EDC Homes 1 LLC of certain parcels of property located at 9300 Buckman Avenue for the total sum of $60,000 in accordance with the terms and conditions of the purchase and sale agreement. Uh, Mr. Clerk, there's no opposition. Please call the roll. I have an ordinance authorizing the conveyance to EDC Homes 1 LLC of certain parcels of property located at 9300 Buckman Avenue for the total sum of $60,000 in accordance with the terms and conditions of the purchase and sale agreement dispensed with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt Ms. Graves. Aye. Ms. Johnson. Aye. Ms. McClellan. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smeagle. Aye. Mr. Thomas. Aye. Dr. Wibley. Aye. Mr. Alexander. Aye. PH3. Public hearing three scheduled for this day to hear comments on the conveyance to DPT Construction LLC of a certain parcel of property at 1501 Isaac Street for $39,000 in accordance with the terms and conditions of the conveyance agreement and authorizing the release of the city's right of reverter upon certain conditions. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. An ordinance authorizing the conveyance to DPT Construction LLC of a parcel of property at 1501 Isaac Street for $39,000 in accordance with the terms and conditions of the conveyance agreement and authorizing release of the city's right of reverter upon certain conditions. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Ms. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Alexander? Aye. Uh, C1 through C14 will be considered in a block. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinances and approve the consent agenda. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Ms. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Alexander? Aye. R1. R1 is an ordinance granting Michael LLC permission to encroach into the rights of way at 1233 West Alney Road, approximately 237 square feet for the purpose of outdoor dining and a vertical garden and improving the terms and conditions of the encroachment agreement. Clerk of the roll. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Ms. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Alexander? Aye. R2? An ordinance approving an assignment and assumption of lease agreement and an assignment and assumption of encroachment agreement between Shenandoah Personal Communications LLC and Clearview Tower Company 2 LLC and authorizing the city manager to execute both agreements on behalf of the city. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt Ms. Graves. Aye. Ms. Johnson. Aye. Ms. McClellan. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smeagol. Aye. Mr. Thomas. Aye. Dr. Wibley. Aye. Mr. Alexander. Aye. R3. An ordinance approving a memorandum of agreement with the Girl Scout Council of Colonial Coast for the installation, operation, and maintenance of the Little Free Library at Lambert's Point Community Center. 
Alderow. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Ms. McClellan? I've got to give a shout out to my Girl Scouts as a Brownie Junior Cadet. This is awesome. Way to go. Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? I want to see pictures. I have Aye. my uniform still. Can you get it? No. I saw your class reunion pictures. <laughs> I said aye. aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Mr. Alexander? Aye. R4? An ordinance granting a development certificate with waivers to permit the conversion of a commercial building to a residential building in the Lafayette Boulevard Pedestrian Commercial and Residential Overlay District on property located at 2701 Lafayette Boulevard. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Ms. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Mr. Alexander? Aye. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. New business. Uh, can, I, can I ask Yes, a, Mr. Riddick. Question. Um, the last meeting we had, uh, a fellow named Jerry Miller had a project to come forth, and uh, it was defeated. And how would that come back, Mr. Attorney? Um, I, I if, think, if there was a desire for it to come back, I'd say. I'm, I'm trying to remember that that was a request for, um, he wanted to build an, another house, and I'm, I'm forgetting now whether it was a rezoning. Um, I, I remember the uh, project. That yeah, it's a rezoning. It was a rezoning. Was. Mm -hmm. um, let me check on that. We might have a, a pro. We might have a, a lag time after a rezoning has okay. come that it might have a wait period. Okay. But I'm not sure. I don't know if you know off your head, George, off the top of your head. Yeah. Um, unless city council waives it, which they can, um, there's a one-year waiting period um, before the applicant can come back and reapply for the same request uh, that was turned down by council. Let, let, us, okay. let us nail that down okay. for you and get right. you the information. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. Uh, the first person uh, is Gordon Dillon. A few weeks ago, a month, two months ago, I appeared before you to tell you about a promise that the city of Norfolk gave to certain developers. They bought the land for $5,531,000, 144 one dollar, and 45 cents. Have you ever bought a car like that? or a house like that, and 45 cents, no. It was on the books, the taxpayer's books, the assessor had been worth $1,933,000. That's a big time difference. Now, Mr. Smidgel, after the meeting the last time I was here, said you can't go by the assessment, you have to go by the appraisal. Well, guess what? There was no appraisal. There was a certified cost listed at the courthouse, and guess what it was? The same exact price as the city appraisal. Now, we're missing, Mr. Reddick, $3,500,000. And you can't go and dis dismiss that. You've got to find out where that is. You've got to find out why my neighbor can't build a shed because it's uh, less than 100 feet from the river, but three blocks away, there's a $200 or $300 apartment complex right on, I mean, units, right on the river. We can't have it. You know, Mr. Mayor, you know what government is, and I forgot who said it. You are the closest government. That's supposed to be the best government. This is where we get our schools, our transportation, our fire protection, our police protection, our recreational needs. And we just can't ignore this. And I hope that y'all right now will make a commitment that you will check into these things. I went to sea when I was 16. My first trip was to Poland. Met a guy on the ship. He was a prisoner of war during the war. Spoke good English. He told me there's an election being held <coughs> tomorrow. 
I said, go to the polling place. And I did. He said that the, the theme is going to be, in Polish, thrice a times the talk. Three times yes. He said, everybody's going to vote three times no. But it came out three times yes. I went to the polling place, and here was a soldier, Polish in a uniform. He had a God ballot in one hand and a Tommy gun in the other hand. Are we getting that way here in this country, in this city? And I, I was in Ceuta. One Norwegian seaman got drunk, and he talked about what a no good, rotten, reprobate dictator Franco was. They threw him in jail. And every time I think about that, how God has blessed us with a democracy. But I remember what Mr. Mayor, our mutual friend, Miles Billis, always said after the State Department sent him on to a foreign mission to help labor unions. He said every time he got back, he kissed the ground and said, thank you, Jesus. Are none of you going to say or do anything? No. Mr. Dillon, thank you for, for coming well, and sharing your you. thoughts. And, uh, this was the sound of silence. And it's not good for the United States. Thank you for coming. Just, uh, Mr. Um, Smiggle. Quick, um, say, and I don't, the city attorney can look into it, but according to Norfolk Air, um, the city paid in 2005 1, 1, 1933000 Norfolk Air is reporting it as one million nine hundred and thirty three thousand so i don't know if there was more to this there was maybe some other property that was included in that total cost that was provided but norfolk air shows that we did pay the assessed value for the property 45 cents what 45 cents uh, they don't they just round up right so but i'm well, mr. saying somebody could probably look yeah, into mr. that Turner, can, a, yeah we can look into that yeah. 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 all right Mr. William Haley. Good evening. My name is Dr. William Anthony Haley. I reside at 327 West 32nd Street here in Norfolk. I am the founder, president, and CEO of Mosaic Steel Orchestra. My purpose here this evening is to request that you exercise your authority, your kindness, and your intellect to find a solution that will allow Mosaic Steel Orchestra to continue our service at the Attic Theater. Mosaic Steel Orchestra is a 501c3 corporation operating in the city of Norfolk since 2007 with our base of operations at the Attic's Theater. The orchestra provides no-fee after-school steel drum programs to youth living in low to moderate income neighborhoods. We receive funding from the Norfolk Arts Commission and have been, and, and have been uh, afforded tenancy rent-free in the Attic's for 10 years. I'm extremely grateful to the city of Norfolk for these provisions. Over the past decade, in addition to our activities at the Attic's Theater, uh, we have partnered with Norfolk State University Brown Building Community Outreach Center, Southside Boys and Girls Club, Campus Stella Elementary, Young Audiences of Virginia, and Norfolk Redevelopment Housing Authority to pro provide our programs. The orchestra has received a letter of commendation from Norfolk Public Schools and recognition from the Virginia Caribbean Cultural Association, the organizers of Carib Fest, for our outstanding after-school steel drum programs. We were also recognized by Norfolk Juvenile and Domestic Relation Court for our programs. The city of Norfolk and the Attics have been mentioned in the Trinidad Guardian, a national newspaper in Trinidad and Tobago, where in 2015, we took a group of 30 youth to participate in an international competition. Most of these youth had never traveled outside of Hampton Roads. Each year, we performed several times here in the city of Norfolk, exposing thousands to unique cultural experiences. Just 10 days ago, we performed for Norfolk's 2007 Neighborhood Expo, hosted by the Norfolk Neighborhood Department uh, of Neighborhood Development, Neighbors Building Neighborhoods. Our programs are designed to develop within our participants, in our youth participants, attributes of focus, teamwork, service, leadership, skills that transcend music, making them better citizens of Norfolk and better world citizens. We understand the need to generate revenue at the Attics Theater, and anytime there is something uh, that causes us to have to uh, leave the, the facility for that purpose, we do so with gladness. The theater has a special vibe in it, and that vibe inspires greatness. And when it was revitalized, the individuals that worked so tirelessly on that project were committed to ensure that there was a community element that would carry out such valuable service as Mosaic Steel Orchestra does. 
I am here tonight again to request that you exercise your authority, your high intellect, and your kindness to find a solution for the orchestra to continue providing this valuable service to the citizens of Norfolk and at a minimum extend our stay beyond the deadline that Seven Venues has given us of Friday, January 29th, 2017. I humbly thank you and pray that you make a, a wise decision. Thank you. Um, Andrea. Uh, Dr. Haley, thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for what you've done. And I know this is a challenging situation. I've served on lots of nonprofit boards, and there's always a tension as to where you're going to locate. Um, we, we have been trying to work with you. I know that uh, Mr. Crittenden from Recreation Parks and Open Spaces has identified, I think, three different areas. None of them are perfect. I recognize that. Um, and, you know, we're, we're trying to work through this system and the opportunities with you. I, I think wherever we go is not going to be probably as good a fit as it, where it is now, um, but we are trying to find some solutions. While you do that, we just ask that you do not throw us out of where we are so that we can continue our service. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. William Jackson. Good evening, Mayor Alexander, City Council. Uh, my name is William D. Jackson, Sr. I reside at 30, in the 3700 block of Buckingham Street in Norfolk. I am the treasurer and speaking for the Estbrook and Coleman Place Civic Leagues. I am here this evening to request for my Civic League that the three speed bumps on Robert Hood Road between Sewell's Point and Isaiah Garden Road <coughs> not be replaced now that the paving has been completed. We have been informed that the hearing impaired child that was the reason those speed bumps were installed originally so many years ago no longer lives in the area. Now that the reason for those speed bumps no longer exist, why should the citizens that travel Robin Hood Road have to put up with the inconvenience of such an impediment? And why should the city of Norfolk have to pay to have them reinstalled? I would like to thank Mayor Alexander and the city council for your kind attention and I'll answer any questions if you have them. I just want to say thank you for coming down. I can't hear you. Good evening. Good evening. I just want to say thank you for coming down All right. um, and addressing the council for your concern on uh, Robin Hood Road okay. and your hard work. Thanks. Thank I you. All right. And I just want to say, too, um, thank you also for coming down, but we'll make sure um, James... Um, Richard or Richard Broad's going to be Okay, Rich. Okay, Richard will get with you. We can look at the uh, document, the original reason why the speed bumps were there. I did not know that. I always thought they were a pain in the petunia. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I thought they were a pain in the petunia. So no. I never knew the reason why they were there. So I, thank you for that history lesson, and we'll work on you know looking at that and then making sure there is not an additional need to bring them back, but thank you oh, for bringing it to our attention. I was still coaching Little League Baseball when they were originally installed, yep. and that's been years ago. The child is not there. Right. Because uh, there are still our deaf child sense. signs. There there are still deaf child guess, signs like that are there. I think they're gone. No, they're there. I've seen one of them recently and showing a house over there. The deaf, so, the the deaf child gone. is gone, but the sign is still there. But thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jackson, get with Richard. Richard um, yeah. is in the back there. Yeah. Richard's with going the to gentleman right there. Right there. Yep. And he's thank you. going to assist you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Ellis W. James. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Mr. Doug Smith, <laughs> my goodness no. gracious. I think I'm going to try to wangle a 
invite to the retreat or something. I don't know. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, lots of things are moving quickly in the city of Norfolk on a lot of fronts. And I would urge this specific action on the part of the council. Please, each of you who are often candidates at one point or another, please remind your supporters that number one, we just lost our voting machines through no fault of our good people who've been doing a good job in the registrar's office. But it is an important item that's going to be upon us very shortly on November the 7th. Because things are moving rapidly, I'd like to call attention to the fact that as you listened this afternoon in the informal session to the back and forth about hot lanes and all the rest, there is one still unaddressed issue that we need to make sure gets taken care of right at the point that that issue is being unscrambled. The city of Norfolk is host to the greatest, biggest naval base in the world. We have currently an administration that has cut and is proposing further deep cuts to the question of our port security. Now, don't misunderstand me. Michael Goldsmith is doing a good job in tackling the issue in the overall. I have no problem. I'm not here to criticize him. But it makes no sense for us to look down the barrel of the gun with all of these huge new containers coming into our port. And we're going to have the funding possibly stripped away for examining each one of those containers. It doesn't take a genius to figure it out. We, if we were a target on someone who wanted to do us harm, they would strike at the Naval Air Station. Now, even a not-so-smart guy like me knows that. So please, port security is serious business. It is not something to play political football with. And I, I'm very concerned about the way this issue is evolving and I hope that the council will take a close look at it. Thank you, Mr. James. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Daniel again. <laughs> My name is Danny Lee again. I reside at 3844 Dare Circle. Uh, I've had the privilege to actually talk to some of you uh, recently. And what has come to light to me is that you've lost sight of why I come here every week. Uh, I had one council person say to me, Danny, grab hold of something you're passionate about and go after it. And I thought to myself as I walked away, for God's sake, have I not impressed you enough that I am passionate enough about a government that I expect to respond to me? Do you not think I'm passionate enough to spend 10 years coming in here and asking for, for openness? asking for truthfulness and asking for transparency. Uh, I've asked a couple of questions. Uh, and uh, do you uh, support racism? Uh, do you support the ability to shut down anybody who walks to this uh, podium? I get the same answer every week, silence, as if it's going to shut me down. I'm passionate. 
it's not going to shut me down until I get an answer to those questions. Uh, I asked uh, Mr. Thomas at one point, uh, why don't you have a 90-second vote uh, as to where you stand uh, on uh, racial uh, activity? He looked at me and said, well, maybe we're glutton for punishments. Really? Is that the best? Yes, when we were on the elevator, sir. Uh, I, I talked to uh, Andrea McCullen, and she says, well, maybe I won't vote uh, to go after anybody because they haven't gone after me, but I will call for us to have a study uh, to, uh, to establish a code of conduct, which Tommy Smeagol recommended uh, for the council members. And yet, I've heard nothing. Pat the old man on the head and send him his way and let's remain silent. Uh, so the, the whole point here is that I am passionate about why I'm here. I'm not an old fuddy man who just wants to hear his own voice and wants to grandstand. Uh, but I do believe that when 50 years ago, and I can't believe this, I was teaching government class, that uh, the government is for the people and by the people, and if the government does not respond to the will of the people, then you have to make it respond. You have to get answers, and you have to uh, keep coming back if necessary. So that's where my passion is, and I will be back here until I get my two questions answered, as long as it takes. Uh, as I told uh, Mr. Alexander, I just had a checkup. Uh, they said I'm in great shape, so I committed at least 10 more years here uh, unless I can get an answer.